Then you run around like a headless chicken claiming that insurance is a scam and no, it's your fault because you don't know the difference between retail value and market value. Or maybe you buy a nice car and no one wants to cover you because you are uninsurable due to your high risk profile. Because to be honest, insurance companies are just in the business of making money and they won't do business with someone who's going to be a huge liability to them. This video is part two. So if you haven't watched part one, you'll be lost till the end. I suggest that you first check out part one from the link in the description below. Then you come back to this video. Towards the end of this video, I'll share a story of my journey with car insurance from the day I bought my first car till the day I sold it. Welcome to another video. I said those who haven't seen part one should go and check it out first then come back here. But there are some clowns who are still watching this video before checking out part one. These are the guys who will buy a Polo for 650k and only insure market value. Anyway, let's continue with the business of the day. Someone asked me, how do you end up paying for a car you no longer have if you lose your car while you had comprehensive insurance? Well, it's due to shortfall and I'll try to explain it in simple terms. When you insure your car, you can either opt to cover for retail value or market value. Retail value is the amount it will cost to buy you a new car of the same model without any extras and market value is the amount your car is worth at a particular time, taking into account its age, mileage, accident history, service history, etc. So basically the market value is the amount dealerships will pay for your car if you decide to sell it to them. Now let me try to make an example of how you end up paying for a car you no longer have even if you had insurance using real numbers. Let's say you take a car loan of 150,000 rands to buy a car that is fitted with optional extras and that car only costs 100,000 rands without the extras. Then you only take insurance cover for retail value, which is the amount it will cost to buy you a new car of the same model without extras. And let's assume your excess is 10,000 rands. If you watch part one, you will know what's an excess. A sitting a party you lose your car due to a bad accident or theft within a month and these things do happen. The insurer will only pay you 100,000 rands minus your excess of 10,000 rands and that equals 90,000 rands. So only 90,000 rands will be paid over to the bank whereas your principal loan is 150,000 rands. 150,000 rands minus 90,000 rands equals 60,000 rands. And that's the money you'll still be owing to the bank after the insurer has paid up your claim. It's even worse if you are only covered for market value because they will factor in depreciation. So if your car is still financed, make sure you are adequately covered. And if you opted for some optional extras such as sunroof, max, banging sound system, leather seats and fancy LED lights, make sure you cover them as well. Covering for retail value and extras is more expensive than just market value cover. But you should avoid market value unless your car is fully paid. That's why when you do an insurance code, they normally ask you whether your car is still financed or not. When your car is fully paid, you will never have any shortfalls because you don't owe anyone anything. The issue of shortfall is usually a problem if you pay little or no deposit at all for your car. If you know you belong to this group, it will be wise for you to take shortfall cover which is a separate insurance which will cover the shortfall in case you lose your car too soon. I hope this part was clear and now let's move on to some tips on how to save money when you buy insurance. The first tip is for those who don't have cars yet. Make sure you get a driver's license as soon as you can because insurers measure driving experience by how long have you had a driver's license regardless of whether you've been driving for all those years or not. It's weird that most guys often think they know how to drive even if they don't have a license just because they played Need for Speed for a couple of times. So they don't see the need to get a license early. I know this because I was one of those guys. In fact, I learned driving from taxi drivers. When I take a taxi to town, I used to sit in front and observe what the driver is doing. I used to check what pedal does what and after how long does he change gears and why. 
in my head i mastered driving through that silly exercise so i didn't see the need to get a license until it was time to buy a car i literally got my license and bought my car within the same week and worse i bought a polo number two if you are a first time car buyer and you are new to the game of insurance don't try to cut corners because the corners will cut you Try to use a reputable insurer, especially the ones we always see on TV and we are all familiar with. Because with car insurance, the aim is not to pay the lowest premium, but to be assured that when each hit the fan, you will be covered. I know someone who was covered by some dodgy company that I've never heard of just because they offered him the lowest premium. His car was written off due to an accident within a few months and you already know what happened next. Luckily for him, his matter was sorted by the ombudsman and you might not be as lucky as he was. Number three, don't buy a car before you know how much it will cost you to insure it, especially if you are a new driver. You will be shocked to find out that your insurance premium will be as high as your car loan installment because some cars are generally considered high risk for new drivers, especially if you are under the age of 25. You can't get your license this week and go buy a Golf 8 GTI next week unless you are prepared to pay 5000 plus on insurance. Choose a car that won't cost you much to insure so you can build your insurance profile and get a better premium when you decide to buy your dream car in future. Number 4. Do at least 3 comparative insurance codes before choosing the one which you think is best for you just like I did when I was looking for insurance for our Apollo GTI. Don't just take the first offer you get. Compare. And you can even do more than three codes if you have the energy for that. Number five, avoid claiming unless it's really necessary. Just because someone scratched your quid with a trolley at a mall parking lot by mistake, that doesn't mean you should go claim from your insurance to fix the scratch or dent just because you have insurance. Insurance claims stick to your record and if you have a lot of recent frivolous claims on your insurance profile, you will be classified as a high risk and end up paying more on your insurance premium. If you can afford to fix the minor damage on your car by yourself, please do so because that will save you a lot of money in future because it keeps your insurance profile clean. Number six, if you have more than one car, try to cover all the cars under one policy because there's often discounts when you cover multiple vehicles with the same insurance company. Number seven, try to always have continuous insurance cover. Don't cancel and restart cover as and when you wish cause that damages your profile. That's why when you do an insurance quote, they will ask you how long have you had uninterrupted cover. Switching from one insurer to another is not a problem. The problem is when you cancel your insurance altogether and restart it at a later stage with the same or a different insurer. Bonus tip. Your insurer will always try to increase your premium every year and give you some sick stories about inflation and all sorts of madness. If they do that, Get comparative quotes from other insurers immediately and use the offers to push for a lower premium. If they refuse, cancel the policy and find a better company. But only cancel once you've already signed up for a different policy because you are not supposed to spend a day without insurance. Because trust me, if you go a day without insurance, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. That's Murphy's law. I challenge you to do two insurance codes after watching this video to see if you won't get a better deal than what you are currently paying right now. Insurance companies are gonna hate me for this video, but who cares? Me, I'm just looking out for my people. Period. Now let me share the story of my car insurance journey. So I bought my first car in 2019 when I was 23 turning 24 high risk, I bought a VW Polo Vivo, high risk, and I was a new driver. My license was only one week old, high risk. All the insurance companies were giving me some ridiculous offers 
and the worst one was assurance with a premium of 4000 rands which was more or less the same as my car loan installment and the craziest part is that the excess was a whooping 25000 rands lol i know right luckily apsa i direct offered a premium of 1800 with an excess of 9000 rands and i took the policy because i trusted apsa with financing my car so i might as well trust them with insuring it so every month when they deduct 1800 and 130 for a tracker i was feeling this and six months down the line i was like no man i can't continue like this so i logged on to hippo.co.za and entered my details and boom i got a good deal from my way insurance with my way my premium went down to 1276 rands and the excess went down to 5000 rands you remember insurance the guys who wanted me to pay a premium of 4000 for a vivo they approached me in march 2020 running some silly promotion they said they wanna do another code for me and if they can't beat my current premium they will give me 400 and i was like okay cool let's do it long story short i chowed the 400 i think i bought alcohol and some takeaways if i remember very well it was free money after all they said my premium will be 3284 for a polo vivo while i was only paying 1276 with my way insurance the turn 400 so i continued paying 1276 with my way after about 12 months with my way insurance they said no look man we have to increase your premium to keep up with inflation blah 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 and i was like okay do whatever you have to do but the problem is at that very same time my residential address and work address was changing i was moving from econook to hazy view so they said my premium will be 1433 and the excess was doubled from 5000 to 10000 that's you know i can't do this anymore it's not you it's me but so i moved to budget insurance one thing about insurance is that every time you change your address your premium will increase it doesn't matter whether you move from a high risk area to a low risk area as long as there's a change of location in their system your premium will go up call your insurer now and tell them that you've changed your physical address and see what's going to happen those guys can increase your premium even if you move out of your house and move in with your next door neighbor as long as you inform them that you have changed your location ah. the other thing that made me cancel my policy with my way is the issue of market value and retail value when i took the policy in 2019 my car was still financed so i was insured for retail value with a premium of 1276 but in 2020 my car was already fully paid so i wanted to be covered for market value which was less than the retail value but they wanted me to pay more that's why i just said fuck so with budget insurance i was no longer covered for retail value i was only covered for trade value which is the amount a dealership will pay for my car when they take into account the age mileage accident history etc and my premium was 1064 rand with an excess of 5950 for me the regular driver if i continued with my way i was gonna pay 1.4 for the same type of cover so i continued with budget insurance until i had to change my location again now i'm moving from hazy view to white driver so i called them and said look gents i can't let see what my location on your system is hazy view but yeah got a change that idea then they said my premium will increase to 1200 you already know what happened next i then switched to auto and general and my premium was 990 with an excess of only 6700 if i stayed with budget i was gonna pay 1.2 for trade value instead of 990 for the first time my insurance was just under a thousand rands 
and I stayed with Otto in general till I sold my car. The end. In my next insurance video, we will look at what could cause your insurance claim to be rejected. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more car content in Mzansi context.